Hello everyone, Teacher Dennis here again. Welcome back to our channel. In the series of this video, we'll be doing database design. We'll be supporting you on how to create databases for organizations. But particularly today, we'll be introducing to databases. So stick around to the end of the video. Hey, and by the way, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to the channel. You can hit the notification bell and as well engage through the comment section. Okay, in unit one today, we introducing to database design and for this video, I'll be introducing to databases. I also discuss database management systems. I will look at the various basics that are underlying with the databases and database management system and then we'll discuss how to develop as a effective database design plan well to begin with what's a database you know we work with data on a reg on a daily basis and uh, we will have encountered very many databases either knowingly or unknowingly. Consider a database as a structured collection of logically related data that is stored so that it can be easily accessed. Now, structuralization here involves uh, organizing data in tables and uh, logical means data is related. Well, the major reason of centralizing or keeping data in one place is just to ease retrieval or ease accessibility. There are many examples I know that you have encountered, like I made earlier on. We have a phone address book, a business customer lists. Maybe one day you made a library database or video library. So all this, because they collect data in one central place, are known as uh, databases. Now you should know that while uh, creating databases there are different types we can form and uh, just to mention a few one of the type is a flat file database. A flat file database is a database with one table. It utilizes a single table to store data in form of rows and columns. And then the other type of data database, database is relational database. This organizes data in tables with rows and columns and a relationship can be created between these tables. So in a summary, you can say flat file is a database with one table and a relational database is a database with very many tables that can be related accordingly. Okay, so that's it with uh, databases. Databases are very, very important. Just to mention a few, what do you think are some of the purposes or merits of a database? Databases help in organization and storage because they help us to centralize data in one place. They foster storage of large volume of data. Then when data has been centralized, it can be easily accessed or retrieved because of uh, extrolling it in one central place. Now, databases also foster data integrity, data consistency, because information is centralized, uh, different security can be provided to editing or changing the data and users will access data according to their level of what security in form of uh, accessibility to passwords. So this fosters integrity, unlike the manual databases where any other person can correct or change the data. Then databases foster security, we've talked about it, and then finally they help in data analysis and reporting. The very vital one is data backup because data, when it is centralized in one place, we can easily backup, we can easily create copies uh, to help in recovery in the case of any possible risk or any possible 
uh, issue that occurs. So that is it for a database. The next part I want us to discuss is a database management system. So what's a database management system? Well, a database management system simply refers to a software program that is used to create and manage a database. We can use the database management system to add, delete, access, modify, and analyze data stored in one location. There are many programs that can be utilized as database management system, but for our case, we'll be using Microsoft Access to design databases but also you can use uh, SQL Server, you can also use Oracle, you can use MySQL and Informix as other examples of uh, database management systems. Now, our point of concern in this video will be covering Microsoft Access. We want to understand how we can effectively use Microsoft Access to create, to manage, and maintain databases. So Access is a database management system based on relational model that contains tables and other components. We can utilize it to create as many tables as possible like we saw with the relation databases. Now for Access, the different components that can be stored are known as objects. And an object is simply a component that helps to give a database deeper functionality. Well, what are these objects of access? We have uh, tables as the primary database object of Microsoft Access. Then we have queries, a very important object. We have forms. We have reports. We have macros and modules. So these are the ones we are regarding as components that help give our database very good functionality. So just to unfold further, what is a table as just to give you understanding of that basic? Well, a table, like we said, as a primary database structure helps to store data in rows and columns. And uh, each, of each row represents a record and each column represents a field, like I'll be showing you. So stored, storing data in columns and rows. Now queries are database objects that help us to retrieve specific data from one or more tables. Once data has been centralized in the database, we can utilize queries to retrieve or filter data according to the preferred conditions. So queries will help us to pose questions to our database. Then forms help users to enter, view, or modify data in a database. Consider forms as the interactive interfaces that the user operates or works with in giving instruction or accessing the data that is in particular forms. Now, like I said, I want to take a look of this table. And in this table, we said uh, we have columns. Columns are vertical segments. Then we have rows as horizontal segments. So in access, the rows are known as records. And then the columns as vertical segments are known as field. There's also another term that I want to introduce to you called the primal key. We'll be unfolding what it is just shortly. So to begin with, let's start with a, a, a field. So like you discovered, a field is a column that gives a single piece of data representing an attribute. Take a look of a registration number about the student's information, student's registration number is only giving us a single piece of data. So columns provide specific piece of information about a given item. 
or a given entity. Then a record is a ROM that provides complete information about a given field. So uh, a, a record gives us information, complete information about an item. It integrates several fields together. And then when creating tables, like you'll discover as we continue with our course, access uses primary keys to control duplication. Just as in, you know in a practical world, a primary key, rather a key uh, is always unique and opens one padlock. With Microsoft Access, we can use uh, tape uh, primary keys to control duplication. So a primary key is simply a field that uniquely identifies record in a table uh, we can use it to create relationships so whenever we will be creating a table we'll be identifying a column that has unique data and we'll utilize it to uniquely identify our rows or records in a table if you have more than one table then you can use a foreign key to still connect one or more tables so the primary key would simply mean a field in one table which is the primary key or a field in one table that we can use to connect two or more tables but be mindful it must be a primary key that means it should have unique data or it should be similar to a given field in the other table we'll be having examples about this practically as we create different databases now, just to summarize with the other objects, we have uh, reports. Once that has been stored in tables, queries help in retrieving data, forms in entering, we use reports as database object to present data, to summarize data. That is, to, uh, whenever we want to present it to uh, given uh, stakeholders. Then we also have macros. Macros are a set of actions or commands that can be automated. You can consider utilizing macros to automate given processes that users will always uh, trigger to perform given instructions, especially for repetitive tasks. We'll have an ex a video that will explain how to create macros. And then modules, a uh, collection of procedures, functions, and variables written in uh, programming languages. We also use modules to enhance the functionality of our database. And practically, we'll be having some videos to uh, explore how we can utilize the modules through this course. So that is it for database objects. We believe those basics give you good understanding now finally for our video today i want us to look at how to uh, plan successfully to creating a database you know you don't just begin creating tables neither do you begin creating forms you must plan a database design now of course what are the steps that we have to follow when we are creating a database design plan so step one involves determining the purpose like i'll give example as we continue let's first identify the second step is planning the database objects you now know what objects are then step three is creating tables and relating the tables and then step four is creating queries step five is creating forms and reports if you successfully follow those five steps in your plan you'll have a very good working database for your organization so let's just take a scenario of a school database how would we utilize this database design process or plan to detail or create a very good process so in the school database the purpose would be managing students information course details class schedules and grades 
If this is not spelled out, perhaps as a developer, you may forget maybe some very valuable information. So at the very start of the process, it is important you define the purpose of the school database, engage maybe the different stakeholders and establish what they want the database to solve or perform. And that will help you at least have good requirement gathering that will aid you in the next step, which is planning database objects. So once you've got the process, now the next step is to identify entities. And uh, in a school database, entities can be maybe the students, can be the teachers, can be the courses, can be the classes and the grades. So from the purpose, you now identify the entities. Now from the entities, you go further to define the attributes. What do you want to store about the students? Maybe you're interested in storing the student's ID, the student's name, and then the grade level. So you logically now analyze the process or the purpose of that uh, database to identify the entities and further logically analyze those different entities to logically get the particular attributes or specific information that will be stored within that entity. So once that is done, we now move to the other step, which is uh, creating tables. And this involves uh, setting up or now creating the tables. When you're done with creating tables, you immediately create data entry points like you further determine how users and where users will enter the data. Things like perhaps the student's registration or maybe the grade submission. We will practically be creating a database for a school in our series of examples using these processes. Now, once you've clearly determined the entry points and uh, you've logically created them, the next step is now for you to identify the information needs. You determine the information you want to retrieve. For example, in a school database, literally, there will be need for a report card at the end of the progressive term for the parents to utilize to maybe gain understanding how their children are performed. Maybe there are some receipts that will be needed at different stages. So such require the use of queries to retrieve data which has been stored. So that is it, friends. I believe that gives you a good understanding on what you should always do while you are planning a database design. For our next video, we'll now be practical to understanding how to create databases and we'll practically continue with this design plan to practically create database, then further move on to uh, break down that data into different entities. So thank you very much. All right, uh, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Consider subscribing. You can also hit the comment section below this video and uh, reach me through any form of comment that you'd uh, wish me to respond. I will always give close attention and respond accordingly to the comments. And uh, by the way, in the next video, we'll be discussing how to create databases. So keep your eyes focused. Let me hope you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the video. So here, uh, teacher Dennis, thank you.